One quick political question. Are you still supporting Bernie Sanders for the Democratic presidential nomination? Uh, I think there's a Democratic uh, presumptive nominee at this point. Um, there are a number of con issues that I remain uh, concerned about, uh, and I look forward to discussing with you again in the future. So you endorsing Hillary Clinton for the nomination? I'm not, are you, I'm not prepared. Are you in her camp yet? I'm not prepared to do that. There are a lot of things that I'm looking at, in particular this issue uh, that she has not moved on at all in this campaign, which is this commitment to continue this interventionist regime change policy uh, in Syria that is proving to be so disastrous. Should he drop out of the race? I'm not going to go there. This is I respect Bernie Sanders and whatever decisions that he uh, makes. I, I know he's grateful to you for your support as well. Flight 804. Searchers have now recovered the second black box, the flight data recorder, which along with the cockpit voice recorder found yesterday could help piece together what caused the plane to crash into the Mediterranean Sea nearly a month ago. I want to bring in CNN's Renee Marsh. So, Renee, how long before we know what, what's inside these recordings? Well, it could be weeks before we start getting answers from those black boxes. It really just depends on how damaged the recorders are. The plane's recorders potentially, though, put investigators one step closer to unraveling the mystery of what caused that passenger plane to crash. A breakthrough in the investigation into the mysterious crash of Egypt Air Flight 804. After experts on board this French vessel located and retrieved the plane's black boxes, investigators may soon be able to determine whether mechanical failure doomed the flight or something more sinister. They'll also be able to hear the final conversation between the pilots as well as any other sounds in the cockpit. The voice recorder is important because it will confirm what the pilots were thinking, what they saw, what they were doing. The data recorder will tell us precisely second by second how the plane was performing. Both recorders were damaged, but searchers were able to retrieve the memory units, considered the most important part. The data recorder can help investigators determine how the plane's mechanics were performing, the engines, the speed of the plane, altitude, and thousands of other parameters. The voice recorder can reveal who was in the cockpit, what the pilots were saying and doing, were any of the plane's warning alarms going off. It could also capture other sounds like an explosion. This is a very important step in the investigating process as it marks uh, the beginning of a, of a long process that's going to go on from there. Both recorders are built to withstand extreme conditions. They can survive temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour, and they're waterproof. I think the chances that they're not going to get anything off it is, is probably pretty low. Uh, advances in technology and solid state uh, technology and in the, in the forensics of getting the uh, material off it have advanced greatly over the years. The flight from Paris to Cairo vanished from radar and crashed into the Mediterranean Sea, killing all 66 people on board nearly one month ago. Until now, the investigation has been stalled, with no evidence explaining what brought down the plane. The airline maintains there were no issues with the aircraft. We have no indications of anything uh, or any malfunctions with the engines as of now. The aircraft was a healthy aircraft. The, uh, 25 days prior to the flight, there was no uh, snags in the, in the technical logbook. With the plane's black boxes now in hand, investigators may be able to unravel the mystery of what caused Flight 804 to plunge into the Mediterranean Sea. And once investigators dry out the recorder, several teams of experts will listen to the voices and sounds on the voice recorder, transcribe every single sound. Of course, this data recorder as well. And Jim, that will create a more clear picture of what went wrong. Well, let's hope we get answers soon. Renee Marsh, thanks very much. Our CNN political commentator and senior writer for The Federalist, Mary Catherine Hamm, and Bernie Sanders supporter, no me can so, Mary Catherine, if I could begin with you. So, so this is our new reporting effort underway to allow Republican delegates to, to vote their conscience. Do you see any potential there for defeating him at the convention? I'm not sure for this reason. If you watch the entire primary, the problem was that people didn't go hard enough earlier enough right. to take him out. And I don't see them suddenly becoming able to do that at the convention at that late date. It may be a Hail Mary. I just don't see it happening. Uh, Nomi, I have to ask you, because this was, well, first I'll ask you, do you, do you agree with Mary Catherine? Do you think this has any potential? 
Uh, I agree with Mary Catherine on that. I think that uh, the Republicans are in a predicament. You know, they're winning off elections. They're not winning presidentials very well. We all know that. It's sort of the, the inverse of the Democratic Party right now. But at least they have uh, the 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 concern of the future of the Republican Party in mind, and I commend the Republican Party for that. They just didn't catch on to that early enough. So it is a Hail Mary, and, you know, they're lucky that they have Hillary Clinton as a candidate. We're lucky that we have Hillary Clinton as a candidate. No, no, me. I, I want to ask you as well, because this has caused a, a huge, huge uproar yesterday. Senator John McCain echoing Donald Trump to some extent, telling reporters that President Obama is, quote, directly responsible for the terror attack in Orlando, his Democratic opponent saying McCain crossed a line there. Now, he did qualify his comments afterwards, but, but of course, those first comments, they're out there. They tend to stay out there. Does this hurt him at the ballot box in what's a very difficult race? John McCain? Or, yes, John McCain. Uh, I think so. I mean, I'm from Arizona, and, and there's a lot of independent thinking Arizonans or some progressive independents in Arizona that he's going to depend on. I think the problem with the John McCain is he's, he's, he's got this careful balance. He's trying to play this conservative uh, in a conservative national strong on national security but the the issue is very much the bush policies that mccain was on board with the very firm national security interventionist policies that led us to this situation i mean barack obama didn't get us into iraq iraq was existed already we had a problem we had uh you know he had a foreign policy plan the problem is is that john mccain wants to blame barack obama and he's been doing that for the past eight years mary catherine there, there hasn't been substantial polling since orlando in the, in the presidential horse race. Uh, would you be surprised if, if this helped Trump in the national numbers? I mean, of course, the narrative right now is he blew right. it because right. of his rhetoric and, and mm -hmm. accusing President Obama of, of colluding, in effect, with terrorists. Uh, that said, I mean, this is right in his wheelhouse. Uh, one, I would note that Barack Obama did get us out of Iraq on, because of a political promise and left a vacuum for ISIS. But here we go. That's another, but we'll set that with aside the, for a moment. With, uh, with this issue, I do think that there is a part of the electorate that responds to just the projection of strength on yeah. this issue. You can't do yourself a ton of harm by being very strong mm -hmm. on terrorists. And so I think there's a, there's a segment of the population that does look at the rhetoric of the left and says, oh, well, you're just calling out all of these law-abiding gun owners in this country and saying they're right. to blame. Blaming and them. you're blind yeah. to this person who actually was to blame. This is a real problem. And people will look at Trump and say, I'm not so sure about him and his policies, but I feel like he sees the problem. Right. And I heard that. I, I made a point of asking. I was down in Orlando for the week, and I asked a lot of folks uh, what their thinking was, and, and many people, frankly, that kind of rhetoric did, did appeal to them. I wonder, Nomi, what your response is, because, you know, you're seeing that issue of terrorism rocket to the top of concerns for voters in this election. You know, Americans are concerned, especially when it's homegrown terrorism. Uh, I think that the issue here is really about this terrorist loophole. And right now, the only people who are fighting the terrorist loophole, which allowed uh, the San Bernardino attacks, which allowed people who've been investigated by the FBI to purchase guns legally, is the NRA. And the NRA, even their own members, 71 percent of NRA members want to close out that loophole. Eighty-three percent of Americans in a poll last week stated that they want to close out that loophole. You know, nine out of ten Americans want to have expanded background checks. This is not a Republican issue. This is not a Democratic issue. This is an NRA issue. And NRA is falsely sending out these messages about what happened in San Bernardino and what happened in Orlando and saying it's just about terrorism. It's just about mental health. No, it's all three of these issues. And there's only one organization that lobbies $40 million a year gun manufacturers spend on lobbying for these kinds of loopholes. And that's a problem. Uh, Nomi Coates, we're going to have to leave. We're going to have to leave it there, Mary Catherine. Uh, thanks very much.